Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back. Never leave important data on your main drive in your computer. Always run that stuff from a backup drive externally. Or if you do have two internal slots in your computer for drives, use your secondary slot as a storage backup for all of your important information you can't afford to lose. And then also, while you're at it, make another copy of all of that data and constantly back that up all the time onto an outside external drive that you can keep safe and tucked away in a drawer someplace because you never know what's gonna go wrong with technology. Now, even though we've had SSD drives out for a long time, Okay, we've also had hard drives for a long time too, but hard drives aren't built as well as they used to be. Even I bought a hard drive a while back and it let me down, okay? And it had only been plugged in a few times. It goes to show you that when you have a mass production society, that means the demand is high for stuff and that means you have a higher failure rate along products, okay? Doesn't matter what brand name it is. Doesn't matter how prestigious the company is, okay? It really makes no difference or how much you pay. The stuff is gonna go down eventually. Sometimes sooner, sometimes later. Sometimes it could be what seems to be a lifetime. It kind of varies. Mileage does vary upon products of the same or alternate products. So in other words, don't trust any of the stuff, okay? Because you don't know. And when it comes to the electronics world, things can go wrong at any time. It happened to me once on a Mac. Now, my entire life of owning Apple II computers, right up through the whole Macintosh line, and I've owned a ton of them, okay? I also used to sell them at one time, okay? Mainly used stuff. But I've also done brand new and used PC. Now, with all that and with all my years of well over mm, 40 odd years experience and being an Apple and PC tech myself, I can tell you I've pretty much about seen it all for the most part. Of course, every time we do say that, something new crops up and it's like, okay, now I've seen it all. No, 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 wait, you'll just give it another six months, you'll find something new and sure enough, you actually do. So you never actually see it all, but you see enough of it after over 40 years, trust me, man, there's a lot of stuff out there and some stuff is pretty good and bulletproof. Other stuff is just utter garbage, right? But then nowadays it's worse, okay? It's kind of like my boss told me once when I was working as an auto mechanic, all cars are garbage, they're junk, okay? But some are just better junk than other junk. That's all there is to it, okay? Eventually they're gonna break and they're gonna cost you a little bit of money or a big pile of money, okay? but it's gonna happen. And computers are no stranger to this, nothing is. So as long as you keep only your programs that you install onto your computer, keep those on your main drive because well, they need to be there anyways, okay? And they run better when they're on the main drive, okay? Any program actually does. So, and then of course you got your OS on your drive. Now, Mac or PC makes no difference. I had one Mac in, in my entire life that went down on me. I had put an SSD in the thing. It was running great for the longest time. And then one day I'm playing on my computer and boom, that was it. She flatlined and turned out, yeah, we had an OS issue, but we also had another issue. I had no way of recovering the drive. So it's like, this is a problem. <laughs> and all my important stuff's on there and dumb, dumb, did not back up his entire contents. I only backed up certain things here and there. I really wasn't overly concerned and I kind of am a procrastinator at times and we all are. We are all procrastinators. And you know, they say, why put off today till tomorrow what you can get done today? Well, that's just the thing. We can say that, but do we actually practice that? Not usually, no. We usually put it off till tomorrow thinking, I'll get to it tomorrow. Then tomorrow comes and then we forget about it and then we suddenly remember by the end of the day and it's like too late, man, time for bed, I'm just nodding. So I'll do it tomorrow and then tomorrow comes and it doesn't happen again. And then one of these days what's gonna happen is you're gonna get screwed over and you're gonna fire up your computer one day and maybe it doesn't even fire up because 
your OS just went wah wah, or the drive decided, I'm gonna pop a circuit. <laughs> Have a nice day, and <laughs> sucker. Okay, and it doesn't matter if it's hard drives or SSDs. They're they're both equally junk. It's just that the SSDs are better. Okay, they're faster. They're better. I find they're a lot more reliable. Today's hard drives that are still being manufactured are worse garbage than what we had in previous years. 10 years ago, hard drives were still being built pretty good, okay? Nowadays, not so much. And I've had my experience with the nowadays stuff, and let me tell you, not so much. I plugged this one drive in maybe a half a dozen times I used it to back up stuff, and it was a big drive, and I thought, yeah, baby! Right? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, didn't go so well for me, did it? Because it let me down and I was not thrilled. But at least I had backups on SSDs. I was safe this time, okay? I learned my lesson, okay? I had to learn it the hard way, okay? But I'm trying to save you from learning that the hard way too. Now, I run my Mac a little differently than I do my PC. My Windows computer has two NVMe slots in it. Okay, M.2s. One's an Express 4, one's an Express 3, but it makes no difference. Each one has a drive. My main drive is my C drive, has my OS on there, has all my games, has all my other software I need to use on that computer. Okay, no big deal. It's a two terabyte drive. I still got a terabyte and a half left over. Okay, I'm doing fine. So I still got lots of space for a lot more games. <laughs> I just got to download them and oh yeah, pay for some of them. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. Anyway, too bad it can't all be free. But um, so then I got a one terabyte in my other slot. Now that has the backup installers of all my games, right? That are on drive installable versions, okay? Then of course I have my CD collection on top of that, which that's fine. Um, and so with that, any other important data that I have, whether it be music or whatever, that's all kept stored on that drive, okay? Now, all of that information is also spread across two other drives, so that there's no way I'm losing anything, okay? And some of the installers that are also on that drive are for programs that I currently have installed on the C drive. I just have backups of the installers. This way I don't have to re-download them again. I can just, you know, click them, open them, boom, install, done. <laughs> too easy. Reloading Windows, too simple, okay? And I have about three different methods at least I can use to reload Windows 11 on my computer, and one of which is the fastest, okay? So the other two are a little slower. On my Mac, I run it differently. Now, when I first got my M1, okay, a couple of years ago, um, of course, I did get it with 16 gigs of RAM, which is as high as the M1 could go at that time, at least for the Mini, all right? And I got a half a terabyte of storage. So I basically did not buy base model, okay, which is 8 by 256 I got 16 by 512 And for quite a while, I used that 512 Now, Macs are very reliable, and like I said, I've only ever had one in history in all my 40-plus years ever go down on me for a computer. So, hey, that's not bad but at least it was an easy recovery and my drive was not physically damaged in any way. So it was just a matter of reformat it, reload, and yeah, suck up the fact that I lost all my stuff pretty well, okay? <clears throat> Especially my most important critical stuff. I should have backed it up, you'd think. Anyways, nowadays I do, but I also, like I said, I only used that half a terabyte for a while since I was able to afford a couple of Thunderbolt drive cases um, and some drives to put in, in them, okay, because they're your do-it-yourself, build-it-your-owns. I built two Thunderbolt cases, okay? I have three all total now, but I built two of them specifically to this Mac, and they're both a terabyte each, and one of them contains my OS and all my software, which I have access to from my, my bar and then other places, okay? The other drive that's mounted is all my games, okay? Now, on a Macintosh computer, the majority of our software, the vast majority of it, is nothing more than DMG files. We open them up, we drag, we drop, we're done, okay? And that's all there is to it. Or it's a zip file. We unzip it, we drag it, we drop it, we're done, okay? Um, very few things actually run an installation program, but those that do are programs that you should actually leave on the main drive. And besides, you can always reinstall them later anyhow. It's not a big deal. Right, but I have backups of the installers for my programs on my secondary drive. 
I also contain all my photos, all my videos, all my, my I run my games literally from that external drive because it's a fast enough drive that I don't get any interference. So I can easily run those those games from those those Thunderbolt drives because they're really screaming fast. So, <laughs> and like I said, they're self-contained apps. I don't have to worry about it. But, um, you know, I still have two copies of all of that information constantly being updated on two other drives. This way, if this one goes down, I unplug it, I plug the new one in, and then I find out what's going on with that one, get that one back up and running, make a new copy, okay, if I need to, right? Something went wrong, went down. Now, if it did toast the drive, I do have at least one spare terabyte drive kicking around. I can just slide it right into that drive, recopy the information onto it, boom, I'm back up, and now I got another one there ready to go. As far as my OS goes, of course, that's a little bit differently. I run the OS from an external drive, like I said, with all my programs. And if anything should happen to it, my internal drive that's in my Mac, because it's non-upgradable, and thank you, Apple Silicon. Actually, thank you, Apple, even previous to that. Okay, uh, and I'm being sarcastic, trust me. I'd rather have upgradable RAM and upgradable drive still in Macs, because it was so much better in those days. But anyways, so, this way, my internal is always left offline and protected on top of that. It's security encrypted, protected, okay? So nothing can mess with it, <laughs> okay? Now, I can if I want to, that's different. But that drive is kept safe and it's preloaded with all the same software. So this way, should anything happen to my external drive, which is now my boot drive, which is twice the capacity, I can simply unplug that drive, no big deal, restart the computer from the internal drive, sign back in with my Apple ID, I am up and running that fast, no reloading to do. Then this gives me a chance to find out what went wrong with that drive and fix that issue, okay? And then I can reinstall my OS back on again and reinstall all my programs again. And I flip her back onto the computer and reboot into the external drive again, leaving my internal always safe and secure, okay? Now, it has been some known issues with some drives going down on Apple Silicon Macs. It also happens on Intel ones too. And when that internal drive goes down, there's no fixing it. So if you have a lot of usage on the drive, well, that could lead to problems down the road. So my idea is better to be safe than sorry. So if I have almost no usage on my drive, the chances of that drive just spontaneously combusting on me is pretty much zero because it's not being accessed, okay? So it's left as a sleeping dog and it just sits there doing nothing and it's not even in my view site unless I want it to be. Otherwise I leave it hidden off my desktop, okay? It's all buried. Um, but that's the best way I think to do things with computers. now. I would say in a desktop situation, desktops work a little differently, but even on a Mac desktop, you would be doing it the same way because Mac desktops uh, basically are your Mac minis, your Mac studios, and of course the Mac Pro Tower, if you're stupid enough to buy the M2, <laughs> a couple of people did and sent them back. Uh, okay, that was a wa that's a waste of money, the M2, but that's a whole other video. Um, but the, the, the M2 Pro was actually Apple's stupidest mistake they ever made because the studio is exactly the same bloody machine, even maxed out or any configuration you can come up with on the studio, you can do it in the Mac Pro and it's exactly the same. There is no performance difference whatsoever, okay? Um, so yeah, it was like $3,000 more for a tower, okay, that does offer PCI slots, which is great, but what are you gonna put in them? Not much of anything, apparently. Um, but anyway, so our desktops are gonna be run all pretty much the same way. Our laptops, now that's another story. The laptops, we do have the internal storage. It's a laptop after all. And you're gonna to wanna to keep stuff on your laptop. And I totally get that, but you can also do the same thing with your laptop, right? Except with your laptop, sure. I would say, why not use the internal storage and use that for your OS and your programs, depending on the size of your storage, obviously. Go with at least 512, you're gonna be a lot happier. 256, you're not gonna be that happy. Besides, you can't do anything serious with a 256 gig drive. So, but either way, I have my MacBook Air here. It's an eight by 256 uh, for RAM and drive size. And for me, it works just fine. And I still got a little over 100 gigs free on the drive. 
I don't have a lot of programs on there. I just have the basic necessities and a few things that are really not necessary, uh, but they're there nonetheless because I had to do some experimenting for you guys. And I still like running those programs from time to time. However, with a laptop, a laptop is portable and it should remain in that way, but you should also carry an external drive with you with your important data on it. Don't keep your important data even on a laptop. It's, you know, it's just not a smart decision. Keep your programs there, keep your OS there, but all your important data, use that data on an external drive, plug it in, run your files from there, from your external drive, and then this way they stay safe and secure at all times, and also keep an extra backup copy of that drive too, be the smart way, okay? That is how I would suggest. Now this sounds like a lot of extra work, doesn't it? And I get it, it really does. But think of it this way, how important is your data to you? Okay, how important is the depth of your wallet or your bank account to you? Would you like to keep your bank account into the pluses or would you rather have it into the negatives because you were a fool, you did not back stuff up or <laughs> um, you didn't have any backups period other than what was sitting on your drive, okay? Run your computer in a smart manner, then you're always gonna be happy. And if something does drastically go wrong with your computer, like it dies, dies, like dead, okay? There's no way they're getting the information off that SSD, even if it's still good. Not without a real serious expensive bill. And they're still gonna have to figure out how to do it because Apple Silicon is pretty tight knit stuff. And Apple doesn't like sharing their software or their hardware for that matter. So good luck getting the information off of there if your motherboard goes down but yet your SSD is safe and secure with all your crap on it, how are you gonna get it off? You know what I mean? That's where you got a problem because this is all soldered on technology. PC manufacturers are also starting to go to soldered on technology too, which is a big problem, right? And they all need to be put in reverse. Let us upgrade our RAM again. Let us upgrade our own drives again. We're all gonna be happy and we don't care if the rest of it blows up, but at least if we can control our RAM and our drives ourselves again, we'll all be happier, okay? And that means we save a lot of money so that we can upgrade stuff at our expense to what we want in there, not what the manufacturer wants in there to force us to comply with their way, okay? <coughs> Anyways, we'll see if that ever changes. I doubt it, but you never know. There's always hope. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and got a lot out of it. I hope that you're you know, you learned a lot from this too. I certainly learned a lot from my past errors and my ways. And now it's a general practice for me. And you know what? If you do this and you learn to do it and you learn to reload your operating system yourself too, the likelihood of you ever having to pay a repair bill with a tech shop is going to be down to near zero. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.